have to walk out this race of life. We have to continue on this path until one day when we stand before God and we hear Him say, hopefully, well done, my good and faithful servant. You have served me well. Good morning to those of you guys who are watching online. We're really, really glad that you all have joined us today. How many of you guys had a good week? Raise your hand. Incredible way awesome. we're talking about unloading. And last week, if you guys were with us, we, we talked about uh, sometimes we carry a load that we weren't intended to carry, right? You guys remember the story of the rocket ship on the trailer? And we tried to load that dude, and it just did not work. We were trying to make that thing fit up on the trailer when it was not intended to be pulled on a trailer, at least not the way that I had planned for it. So this week, we're going to kind of dig a little bit deeper into our second, second week of Unload. That's right. Today, we're going to be talking about what's your weight. Now, whoa, typically— whoa whoa whoa, 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 Yes. You can't ask people what their weight is. We're about to. Well, you don't do that. Why? Don't you know any better? especially women, right? You don't <laughs> ask a woman what she weighs. That's just... Have you ever weighs? done that? Have you tried that? I have. How did it work out for it you? It did not work out good at all. It didn't work out good at all. There, there's just certain things you do, and there's certain things that you don't do, and asking a woman their weight, or, or even insinuating that they weigh more than you think they might, just doesn't lead to good things, all right? And listen, my dad's here, so I'm going to just just kind of insert a little story here because I have learned a lot of great things from my father, let me tell you. Incredible man of wisdom, people. Incredible. He has taught me so many things that I should do in life. And there are some things that he has taught me not to do in life. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is one of those things. Yes, one day my dad was working out at the gym, as he always does. And he was working out on the sit-up bench, just cranking him out. I mean, he was just working on that six-pack. And I tell you what, he was sitting next to this girl that was very pleasantly blessed around her midsection. And my dad, being the outgoing person that he is, being very sociable and just loves building relationships and meeting new people, he sat up next to her and he said, Congratulations, when are you due? Which is probably your first clue in that is if someone is next to you doing sit-ups, especially a girl, there's probably why a reason would, she's working on her abs and why, it's probably not delivery. Why would a pregnant, right. expecting woman be doing sit-ups, dad? <laughs> I don't know. But nonetheless, he asked her, when are you due? And she sat up very quickly. Follow me. Oh, no. She sits up and she says... What did you say? And he said, oh, nice. <laughs> I thought the story was nice do, but apparently it was how do you do? Either and way, then it he all quickly, the same. Then he quickly diverted and said, I'm sorry, I, I, think, did they, just, I think they just paged me. I got to go. And he got up and walked off. Talk about awkward. Dad, you don't do that. You don't. You don't just, if, listen, guys, if you're thinking it, just leave it there. Yeah. Just leave it in the brain. Don't speak it out. Just think it and leave it there. That right? is a whole other message we should teach sometimes. So nonetheless, we're not talking about, we're not talking about asking, asking you your people weight. what their weight is. We're talking about you doing an intrinsic look at what your weight okay, is. Cool. This morning, pray with us, if you will. Bow your head. Father God, we are so thankful that we can come into your house, God, and experience your presence. God, we are so thankful for your word, God, that brings us life. God, it is, a, it is a blueprint and a roadmap for our life, God. I thank you today that you are going to show us, Father God, areas in our life where we can all get better, where we can be drawn closer to you. Father God, I pray that you would anoint this word, anoint our lips, God, to deliver the message you have for us today. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 You guys turn to Hebrews this morning. Chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. We're going to take you through this passage of Scripture as we began last week. And it says this, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, 
let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set for us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith because of the joy awaiting him. He endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Amen. The Apostle Paul is who is believed to have written this book of Hebrews. And when he wrote it, during that time, there was what was called the Olympics. You guys ever heard of the Olympics? Yeah, I think everybody's heard of the Olympics. Probably so. You're just all not going to raise your hand because you're (laughs) scared of what we might do to you. But the Olympics was something that happened all the way back in that day and time. And there were tribes of Greece that would come together and compete in these amazing coliseums. And one of the things that they would do during the Olympic Games was a foot race. And it was very popular. Today it would probably be like the marathons or the 5Ks that people ran. But people trained and they got ready for these races. Now, I don't know how many of you guys have ever run a marathon. Anybody? Come on, raise your hand. If you ran a marathon, you should raise your hand. One Caden did. kid. Oh, you ran a 5K. You ran a 5K. All right. right. How many ever ran a 5K? That's three miles. Awesome. Only one. We need to get this church on some 5K runs. And yeah. I'm just going to buy the outfit and cheer you on Yeah, and, from and the side. Sean and I will run the golf cart video team. Sweet. And I'll sit on the back and I'll cheer we'll you guys cheer on. We'll cheer you all on. Like, you guys are awesome. Well, here's Woo-hoo. the deal. If you sign up for a marathon or you sign up for a race, you're obviously, the object is to compete. So it's to go to the starting line and it's to run. But you can't do that if you haven't prior to that event done some training. Now, okay. if I were going to run a race, I would probably go out and start running every single day. Okay. Not that I want to. Okay. But if I were going to, I like to work out, but I don't really like to run. Um, <laughs> not like an oxymoron. I don't know, but you've been running through my mind all morning, baby. Oh, wow. That's a great one-liner. <laughs> hey, you know what I told her yesterday? I said, I said, girl, he I'm always, up with cheesy I'm always, always flirting with my wife in front of my kids because I think it's very healthy, right? It's, it's very, really very gross. healthy that they know how much that. So I said, mm, man, I said, honey, you are so hot. My goodness. I'm about to have a heart attack. Yeah. You only laugh Damn. because his jokes are so incredibly cheesy. And my kid it's said, good. That's good stuff. it's a heart attack, Dad. He no. said, no, it's a, it's a heart, heart attack. attack. <laughs> <laughs> Back to yeah, our race. Doing. Obviously, there's some <laughs> training that you would need to do. And Paul knew very well that the people he was writing to, they would understand an illustration of a race because they saw him all the time. So he said, hey, guys, listen to me. The Christian life that you're running, it's like a race. Once you accept Jesus Christ into your heart and he's forgiven you and you begin this new relationship, it's like you're running a race. So there's a starting point and there's a finish line. And that finish line is when you cross over into heaven and you've made it. And you stand before Almighty God and you hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You have served me well. Those are the words that we long to hear. And so this race is not just, it's not a sprint. It is a marathon. It is an all, the entire life you're going to be running this race. But he also knew that here's the deal. It's not just me. I'm not in it all by myself. If you look at this passage, he says, let us run. So you're not going to do it by yourself. The good thing about that is when I get on this starting line, there's other people on this side and on this side, and we're all in the same race headed to the same spot. The cool thing is it makes no difference who finishes first. All that matters is that we all finish the course. We're all going to the same place. But the challenge is, Paul knew that sometimes in life we start carrying these loads and we start getting burdened down with junk that slows us down. Last week we talked about some of that junk being frustrations. Um, In life we have frustrations. Anybody ever been frustrated? Bunch of liars. We've all been there. And here's what happens. In life, frustrations come from one of two places. People and circumstances. If we could do without people, we'd have a lot less frustration. But people are a part of our life. Kind of part of the deal, right? kind of part of it. So the second part that Paul said we got to get rid of, it's not just the daily circumstances. We don't just unload our stress. But he said we have sin that weighs us down. 
So uh, this morning. What is, what is sin real quick? Just for those who may not know. That's a pretty strong word. It that can is. Be a, it can be offensive. It can be. Especially if we don't understand the Here's reality. an easy way to understand it. Sin is anything we do, physically do, anything we say with our mouth, gets me in trouble, anything we think Amen. in our mind that displeases God. So the way that I that always, and this it. is how I personally live my own life, is if I'm about to say something, I think, is this going to make God proud? Oh, just zip it. That's like almost what a lot of what we go to say <laughs> so you just have to shut up most of the time there one, of, to be one of the greatest things i've learned in my life is just to shut up that people so, told is, me that a lot growing that is up good preaching honey it is but this morning i'm going to show you um just what it would be like if i were to enlist in a race what do you okay. do sign up i'm yeah, going to sign up know. sign up okay i'm going to sign up so i'm going to show you what Register. i would do because i've been thinking about it okay what I've been thinking about it. Not. You want to run a marathon, babe? Come on. No. 26 miles. 26 miles? Come on. You can no. do it. You can do it. Okay. Well, I've got some cool stuff I picked up. Come what here. Are you Help me. We're going to go this way. Follow us, Sean. We're, here we go. But we're going to go, and we're going to go pick up some awesome things that I've got for this new race. Where, where okay. are we going? Right here. What on Help earth? Are out. we going on vacation? Uh, maybe. I'm trying to pack, All which right. is kind of difficult for family oh, because man. we have a very large family. Yep. And okay. I don't like the inconvenience of not being home. All right, I've got your makeup. I like to have everything. No, that's Kim's bag. That's not mine. <sighs> Hold on. I'm coming. Wait. <sighs> Babe, there's still another one, Brad. I know. I can Brad, only get one makeup bag at a time. World? Do you see what I'm carrying? You only have one. I do. One. Well, it was heavy. Oh, my word. Okay, this is like the Helton family going to the airport. Seriously, imagine with me. Okay, so... Imagine All right. with me. Whew, oh my word, I'm exhausted. Okay. So we have um, entered into, I like my new bag. This is a cool one. I can't leave home without my new one. Um, we have entered into this race and whew, we've been training. We've got the cool outfits in our bags and we've been training. Now, how many knows if you're going to race, you need to train first, okay? I would encourage any of you, if you're going to sign up for a 5K half marathon, marathon, you might need to do some training. And that means that every day you have to get in a habit of doing something to prepare yourself, okay? Stop so, drinking soda pop. Stop drinking soda pop. Start running every day. I would just start with no soda pop. Just your training technique would be drink no start soda. Start with diet first, exercise later. Actually, what? mental games first. Just pushing yourself to the limit just in, in envisioning your mind? the form that you're going to have running that I'm going to have running it's going to be awesome start there sweet okay that's my no. take that's terrible you're not going to do that you're going to literally put your feet on the ground you're going to start running okay. every single day there's a reason I don't run marathons I love to work out but running I don't really like it like I make myself I don't really like it right but if you're going to train for a marathon you're going to go out every day, rain or shine, cold, dry, hot, whatever, and you're going to run. And every day you're going to push yourself to go a little bit farther so that when you get in the real race, you actually can make it all the way to the end. Okay, that's good well, advice. Let me help you to understand something. In this Christian walk, once you accept Jesus Christ, we are not just here to accept Jesus and then be sucked up to heaven, right? Because we're all still here. Here's the deal. We have to walk out this race of life. We have to continue on this path until one day when we stand before God and we hear him say, hopefully, well done, my good and faithful servant. You have served me well. Well, here's what happens. A lot of times we know in our mind, like, I'm a, I'm a believer. I've accepted Jesus. I got the T-shirt. I got the outfit. I'm ready to go. But what we do is we come to the race with all this junk, and we start loading up all these weights, and we are like, okay, hold on. I'm totally. You, got, you need some help? Almost ready. Um, <clears throat> you got it? I think, okay. And it's like, we're going at it all wrong. It's like, okay, wait. Ah, I still need this one. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. All Come right. Here we on. go. Here. Um, here, you can do that one. Oh, my goodness. I can't. Let me just be a blessing to you, honey. Let me just help you if you're going to run. Do it right. You take all, all this right. stuff with you. Ugh. I can't do it. I can't do it. There's too much stuff. No, I cannot do this. Why in the world would God tell us to run this race if I can't do it? What is that look you have on your face for? Do you have any advice? 
Well, why are you running with all that junk? I need it. It's the essentials. Essentials. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, I, what What do you have here? What 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 is so important that you have to take it with you on this okay, trip? Okay. Well, first of all, it's this a one race. Right here. Do you want to win? <laughs> yeah, I love competition. I'm all about winning. Okay. This one. This one right here is my past. Okay. And in this, I've got every mean thing that anybody ever did to me. And all the bad things you ever said to me. Me? Yes. I filed them away. They're in here. Oh, because that's typical of women. They do that, don't they? They don't forget anything. They're yes. like an elephant. Not as big as an elephant, I but like an elephant. And wow. that they never, ever, ever forget. Okay, so you're holding right. on to it. Go ahead. Okay, so that's fine. I thought we were over this, but kay. go ahead. Well, and this, this big one right here. Yeah. Okay, this one. This one is the offenses. All the people who have offended me, and I'm just kind of holding on to it. Okay. Okay. And this one. This yeah. is. Oh Doing your gosh. curls. This one is unforgiveness. Okay, because there's lots of people that I'm never going to forgive. I don't even care if they ask because they were rude and they were hateful and they treated me bad and I'm oh. holding on to it. All right. Okay, and so then I've got, whew, okay, I've just got the stress of life. I've got this one over here and this is just my everyday life because I'm married to you I and I have four children. And so, I mean, life just happens and it can be a bit stressful. Why'd you marry me? But I love you and so I'm holding on to it. I love you too. So I got it. I Man. got this one, okay. So this one around my neck, well... This one's really dear to my heart because I just can't let this one go. I mean, what this is, is the current stuff that I deal with every day. Yeah. I mean, I kind of have a big mouth. You don't say. Yeah, well, it serves me well in certain si situations. Yeah. But other time, it really kind of trips me up. Right. So I hung it around my neck. Hopefully, okay. I'll keep it away from my toes. Okay. Close to my mouth. But I just can't get rid of that Are one. Are these your words? I mean, it's my, yeah. Bad words? I don't cuss. But I like being able to speak my mind. True story. I like being able to say what I think right. and say what I want to say. So I'm going right. to hold on to that. I think it's a part of my personality but, but listen. that God doesn't want me to give up. But you're not going to win. Yes, I am. No, you're not. I'm determined. I don't care. I have a lot of determination. That doesn't matter. Why? Because you're weighing yourself down. There's no way you're going to even be able to finish the race with all this stuff, let alone do it fast and do it effectively. Well, why don't you help me? Because I want to win. Well, loser husband! Loser husband! Come on. See, I don't want all that junk. Why would I do that? Well, and so here's the deal. Besides, you're doing such a great job carrying it all yourself. No, I'm not. I'm burning up hot and my neck is about to break off because of this big Well, why'd mine. you put it all on? I don't know. Get rid of it. It's crazy, isn't it? It's crazy. Okay. 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 I don't know what to give up. Well, you can start with your mouth. <laughs> That's going to be the last one to go, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with my past. I can all right, do up all with right. that one. Which one all was right, your past? Right. I can't remember. Well, this this one, and those are the offenses. And These this are, is, this let's is, just do them okay, two I'm in one just, shot. Let's just okay. do it all two in one shot. All right. I'm going to oh, so put this stuff down. You want me to take it over here? Okay. You're just going to get rid of it? Oh, don't take it too far away. What if I change my mind? Okay. Well. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to line it up all night. kind of how you do with shirts that, uh, yeah. you know, you say aren't really in style anymore. I don't know. What do I say? And I don't she know takes them and about. donates them without uh, my approval. Oh, your ugly shirts? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I do that. Okay. So I'm just going to line like it up. you guys like this shirt? Thank you. line it up. Okay. Oh, my gosh. It's okay. Oh, well, we're not taking okay, a Okay. So I lay down my past and my offenses and all my hatred and all my anger and bitterness and unforgiveness and the stress that we have all the time in our life and can I just hold this one because I think I can do it What's you remind me of one, one of those extreme face? moms that have their baby strapped to their chest yes. with all you know, the tool belt that. with the bottles and everything the tool belt with the bottles yeah whip them out you I know had twins and I didn't do that I, I, okay. I just I wouldn't recommend it not if you want to win. Not if you want to run the race effectively. Here's you, the here's here, the way I see it. You take it off. You take it. I don't want it. Why not? Because your mouth has gotten you in a lot of trouble, and I don't want any part of it. I'll help you take it off, but I'm not going to carry it. I'll help you get rid of it. You won't carry it just in case I need to take it back. I'm not going. I'm not carrying it for you. Okay. All right. We can so do this. We taking can do this. it off. Okay. 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 No, nope, I want it. I'm gonna hold on to it. I like it. <laughs> okay. So. I really think that you need to just get rid of it. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, because you said. Because okay, I said. No, it's because God says. Okay. Ah! Really? Ah! Get rid of that mouth. Ah! Man. Wow, you know what? Doesn't that feel good? Actually, wow. I feel kind of light. Good. Like feel like you can run. Yeah. Do you feel that's like what I'm I can about. run. You know what is absolutely crazy? You're all awake. See, nobody slept through that. Here's the deal. As funny as that is and as stupid as I look, you Amen. and I, you and I do that all the time. We do. We pack on and we carry all this junk. Last week we talked about how there's frustrations in life and there's just circumstances and people. Those aren't sins. But then he goes on and Paul says, but let go of the sins that so easily trip you up. Those are past sins, the junk that's happened in your life people that have offended you, people that have hurt you, things you've done yourself that you can't get over, that you're like, God could never love me because I have done this and I've done this and I've done this. God says you've got to lay it down. You've got to let it go. And then those current sins in our life, those temptations, those things that the enemy has been watching each of us. And mine might be my mouth, and I'll admit that. I have to, I have to every day pray, God help me to be soft-spoken. I'll never forget the day we got married. My cousin Monty comes up and he hugs Brad. Yeah. He's like, gives him this hug. True. And he said, I'm sorry. Or what did he say? What did he <laughs> say? He, he, it was almost offensive to me, but I got over it. What did he say? He said, he said, she's she's a good woman. She's strong headed. There you go. But she's a really good woman. You guys are gonna you guys are gonna okay, be good it wasn't, for each I'm other. Sorry. It was like she's really strong, and I'm like, what did he mean by that? You know, like, this is our <laughs> <So> wedding day. <laughs> I, and, and honestly, I think it no, to my mouth. No, and then I thought, dear God, what have I gotten myself into? And then her uncle grabs hold of me by the neck and kisses me right on the face and says, welcome to the family. <laughs> and somebody oh, tried to weird. take a picture, and it didn't take. And they said, all right, let's do it again. Mwah, welcome to the family. And it didn't take. And he kissed me five times on the face. And I thought, I am done, and we haven't even started. And you could. You could have in that moment held on to that, but you let go, didn't you? I did. You know, it's so easy in life, guys. Every every single day, we have to unload and unpack the junk that we hold on to. And if we're really going to run, if we're really going to make it to the finish line, which is heaven, we have to let it all go. You know, here's the deal. So many times, people get started over here. And they take just a few steps in this race. And then they want to go right back. And they grab onto the same old junk that they carried around for so long. And they may have even laid it down, but they go back and they put it all back on. And then they just stand there. And you talk to them and you say, man, what's going on in your life? How can I pray for you? How can I help you in this race? How, how are you coming? Are you growing in your walk with God? Are you, are you getting closer to God? Are, and it's like, I can't do it. I just can't do it. I can't give up these things. I'm just going to hold on to them. And the people who do that are absolutely miserable. You make yourself miserable when God says, I'll take it all. I'll take every one of them. This morning, we're going to do something special in just a minute. But before we do, I'm just going to tell you how you lose the weight, okay? I've helped people on the health side do that a lot in life. But I'm going to tell you today how you lose the weight of sin. And here's how you do it. You first have to identify it. You have to admit you have a problem. Somebody else can say you have a problem, but if you don't admit it yourself, you can never get over it. Second thing you have to do is you got to confess and repent your sins. The Bible says that if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And the third thing is you've got to walk in the Spirit. Galatians 5 tells us, and I'm not going to read this whole passage, but Galatians 5 says, if you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That means that after I've repented and I've let go of those things, that every day I have to get up and I've got to put on Jesus. I've got to get in my word and I've got to put on the Spirit of God. I've got to say, Holy Spirit, you are welcome into my life, into my day. I want to be successful today in this race. So many people that are just honestly, if they would be honest with themselves, they're miserable in life because they're carrying around all of this weight, all of this baggage. And what they don't understand is that all of us are in a race. You realize that each and every one of us are in a race in life. And, and there's really 
one of two tracks that you're on. Either you're on the track that God has laid out for you, and the finish line is your destination, which is your destiny in Christ. And others are running a race that was never intended for them, and they're carrying a bunch of baggage that was never intended for them. And, and, and though at times during that race it may feel like they're having fun, it might seem like it's, it's, it's just the, um, the entertaining thing to do. It just really feels right. But the truth of the matter is, when we commit ourselves to Christ and we are setting ourselves on that track that God has laid out for us, God's favor and His blessings are poured out in such an unbelievable way. And you begin to live a life like you never imagined possible. God's favor, God's blessings, not just here on this li in this life, but then in heaven for eternity, you get to experience God's presence forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And what I want to do real quick is I want to invite a, a, a couple to, to join us for just a second here as we close today. You know, there's so many people uh, that have come through the doors of Mountain Movers Church and life after life after life after life has been changed dramatically for the kingdom of God. I mean, God has helped people to realize their mountains and as soon as those people move the mountains out of the way, allow Christ to do a work in their life, I'm telling you that they, just, they begin to experience life in a way that they've never experienced life before. And, and as I said, there's many, many, many people that whose lives we've seen change tremendously. But today, just for a moment, I want to bring up Shelby and Clayton Maine. If you guys would give them a hand as they come. Yeah. Amen. And what I want to do uh, is I just want to take a moment to, to just interview them and just ask a few questions about what life was like before, what kind of race they were running, what kind of you know, track they were on, and then just see what happened once they began to position themselves for Christ and see how God just began to change their lives. So, all right. Good morning, guys. Morning, morning, morning. So um, I'm going to let you guys share that mic. So, so, this, so this morning, I just want to ask you guys a few questions. Just really quick, just kind of walk us through what, what did your race look like before Christ? We weren't racing. <laughs> we were, how do you, you mean our lifestyle? Yeah, what, what, with your lifestyle, what kind of things were you guys involved in that you really thought was going to, uh, you know, bring fulfillment and happiness and reward? Basically, we were just, it was just kind of whatever made us happy day to day, week to week. Um, we spent a lot of time drinking, partying, you know, um, there was no God in our house, nothing to, you know, progress us forward right? at all. So, so what was, uh, like Misty was talking about the mouth luggage she was carrying, what were your mouths like before running the race of faith with Christ? Sailors. <laughs> Sailors! <laughs> yeah. All right, and, and so, bad. so did yeah. that pay off for you? Did that feel rewarding to you? I mean, did that long no. term you know every once in a while I thought you know I really should watch my mouth but I could never I could never kick it I would try yeah. but it just I was better in front of the kids maybe a little bit <laughs> so you guys would drink a lot you guys would party a lot you yeah. guys had mouths how about temper did anybody have a temper it's, it's, <laughs> it's, yes it's yes ladies dog. and gentlemen <laughs> he had a temper folks and so were you guys happy I think that we thought we were happy. Good. I mean, for the, we felt like we were until we drank. You know, I mean, there was, I mean, we felt happy. Right. Does that make sense? I yeah, mean, we absolutely. thought we would, you know, we would drink and then we would fight. I take that back. Maybe we weren't always as happy as we thought because we'd stress about money, then we'd fight. Right. You know, um, we were trying to carry all of that weight on ourselves. Right. Absolutely. So, so then something happened, something shifted. And I'll just, as a side note, I'll just say that I had the privilege of inviting Shelby to church for like eight, eight years. Probably eight <laughs> years. No, seriously, a real, years and years. But it was a long time. It was years. I mean, we're, we're talking years. I actually long, would even tell Brad, stop bugging Shelby. Like, pray for Shelby. Because Kevin had came to day camp, but we'd see her at Lowe's checking people out, and she was always smiling. And we'd be like, hey, Shelby, you should come to church, and her face would change. And it was like, you're making her feel uncomfortable. Let's just chill a little bit on it. Until one day, 
we walk in that side door as always and we look out across the crowd and back in the back I'm like that's Shelby. Shelby and Clayton May. No way. Like they came to church. It was awesome. It was really, but even that morning, I have to admit that morning, I thought that they, see their parents, her parents already attended this church. And I thought, okay, he just asked her to come. And so they're just, they just came just to make him happy. But no, they were really coming to check the church out. And from that moment, you guys just, you and Clayton just decided what, once you visited uh, when you were in God's house the first time, what, what happened? We'd actually been looking for a church. We decided that we wanted to make a change in our life, and we'd been to several other churches, and nothing fit or felt right. We really wanted to hear, we talked about it. We wanted someone to tell us the truth, you know, sure. of our how we needed to live our life. And um, it just, it felt like home. And Clayton said, told me that we weren't going to miss, or we were, that's where we were going to go. We, and to be honest, he had to drag me for a couple weeks. Yeah. Because he was absolutely more about being a faithful attender at first than I was. Yeah. Awesome. And so now where I want to take you with this conversation is, is just lay it all out. What changed after you guys made that decision to just, you guys really just made a covenant with one another and with God. You said, you know, because uh, you guys painted the picture for me many times before that, you know, a lot of times you would just hang out and go down to the river and just get drunk and just like float and just have a good time. And that was your way of having a good time. And But you were you were done with that life and, and you just made a decision. We are just going to go all out for God or nothing. God or bust. And when you guys made that decision, we saw you guys just begin to become very faithful in attending church every single time the doors were open and even up to this day I think maybe you guys have missed church twice maybe, maybe <laughs> twice and how many years have you guys been attending August is three years August is three years isn't that awesome amen give them a hand and guys and I, I'm telling that this is a very very important thing that I want you to understand when you make God's house a priority and you're there every time the doors are open, you establish a new lifestyle, you establish habits, and those habits lead to the favor and the blessings of God in your life. So, so you began to get into God's word, you learned how to pray, you got around godly people, and you started building new friendships, new relationships, you were in God's house every time the doors were open. So since then, you've noticed a difference in your quality of life. Now, this is not a prosperity message. I'm not saying that when you serve God that you're going to get rich and everything's going to be perfect. You'll never get sick. That's not what I'm saying. But God's favor and God's blessings do follow and precede those who put him first. So listen to what God has done. Roll that fabulous bean footage. Tell us everything. What has God done? It started with... Um it's a long story, but I won't tell the whole story. But basically, he blessed us with a house to a house. And I mean, it's that whole story is amazing. I mean, he literally blessed us with this house for less than they wanted for us to pay every month. Um, and this is going to sound funny, but then the house caught fire, <laughs> which the house was a fixer upper and it absolutely needed work in the kitchen, which is where the fire started. So God remodeled our house because there's no other way to put it. We hadn't signed papers on that house yet. They could have said, we're going to just take the money and um, you guys find somewhere else to live. And we we're blessed with a beautiful place to stay that summer. Um, <laughs> that summer, he gave us a car that we needed. Um, he gave it to us. Nothing. We didn't pay for that vehicle at all. Um, I mean, in just over the process of this last year, Clayton's been blessed with a fabulous job. I mean, he even gave us a dog. <laughs> I mean, we have just been super blessed since we put God front and center and left our old, basically unloaded our old lifestyle. Um, you know, some things still, your past still comes back to want to, take a ride with you, you know, but you just, it's, he has absolutely blessed our lives more than we ever could have possibly imagined. Um, if we wouldn't walked in, have walked in those doors together and made the commitment together to serve the Lord, 
I doubt that we would be together at all. Um, it wouldn't be a pretty picture. It's not a perfect picture right now, but I have someone to unload everything that happens day to day on, you know. And I don't mean Clayton. <laughs> but I definitely, yeah, it's definitely a prettier, happier picture than I ever could have imagined that my life would be. <laughs> Clayton's really quiet, but when you get him one-on-one, -on -one, he will just unload all of the great stuff that God has done. Actually, he is, he's a jabber box because he came in my office the other day when I'm trying to work, and he, like, walks in. I'm like, what are you doing here? He's like, you want to hear something cool God did? And he starts to tell me, yeah, she didn't tell you that. They just now are signing the papers to actually buy and put the, the home in their name. And he walked in, and he told me, and it's like thousands less. The banker slid papers across the table, and they said, that's not the right amount. And he said, yes, it is. That's what they told us. And it was like 19000 less than they were prepared to have to pay. And he was like, how cool is that? And I'm like, that is awesome. That is just how God works. I mean, you didn't even pray for it. You didn't expect it. You went in there going, okay, God, if this is your will. And God says, here's a little bonus. This is ice cream on top of your cake. And Clayton recently uh, was just praying and asking God about his, his, uh, his job situation. And the Lord blessed him with a new job. And that's not it. I mean, the dude, God has blessed him. He's making twice as much as he was before. Is that not awesome? Look at what God, do you think this is coincidence? There's no coincidence There's no in the coincidence. favor of God. There is right. no coincidence in serving God That's and right. keeping him first and running the race and losing the baggage. As soon as they lost all that junk, look at what God did for their lives. Right. I hope this is Amen. an encouragement to you. I hope that this inspires you. Listen, here's some things that, that we can learn from Shelby and Clayton. Be in God's house every single time you possibly can. Amen. Be people of prayer. Get into the Word of God. Surround yourself with godly relationships and watch God's favor and His blessings fall out on your life. And you begin to, to follow that track that God has laid out for you rather than the track that you try to lay out for yourself. The great thing about this track is that it leads you not only to a, a lifetime of, of just God's favor, but I'm talking about an eternity of God's blessings on your life. Give them a hand one more time Amen. if you would please. Thank you guys. We're talking today about unloading. Unload the junk that is going to slow you down and trip you up. You don't need it. You don't need it. So I want to ask you today as we're concluding is what are you carrying that is tripping you up, that is slowing you down? What is on your back? What are you pulling behind you? What do you have hanging around your neck? I want to challenge you today to get rid of it. It's just not worth it. Maybe you have unforgiveness towards somebody in your heart. And you've said to yourself, I could never, ever forgive them for what they did to me. Let me tell you, you can. Because guess what? God forgave you. Jesus forgave you when he was hanging on the cross with those nails in his hands. And he forgave you of all of your sins so that you could have life and have it more abundantly. You know, you and I don't deserve eternal life. We don't deserve salvation that's made available to us each and every day. But it's only because of who Christ is and what he chose to do in our lives that we can be set free. And we can have a salvation and eternal life with him forever and ever and ever and ever. Eternity is forever. And it's made available because of him. I want to tell you guys, it's not worth carrying the junk. You weren't intended to carry it. It's not God's will for you to carry it. God wants you to unload today. And as you begin this to unload... When you know you're making progress is when you begin to not even recognize yourself any longer. You know, the Word of God says is that we are to become the image of Jesus Christ. That when people look at us, that they don't see us, they see Jesus in us. And one of the things that Shelby told me, and I don't even know if she knew that scripture when she said it, but one day we were just talking to her, and she said, you know, we don't even recognize ourselves anymore. And I said, that's awesome, because that is exactly what God wants. He doesn't want you to recognize the old person because that person is long gone, and you begin to develop into the person God wants you to be, and the world begins to see Jesus in you. And we've seen God do this in many people's lives, not just Shelby and Clayton, but many, many, many people have come through the doors of this church and other churches all over the world where they have decided to do one thing, and that is unload get rid of the weight that was slowing them down and tripping them up. 
And I want to tell you today, God is giving you an opportunity right now to do that very thing. And I want to tell you, your life will never be the same again. I'm not even just talking about salvation. I'm saying you might be saved and you might be carrying junk on your shoulders that you don't need to be carrying. And God wants you to get rid of it today. Would you stand up with me? We have an opportunity today to enhance the spiritual temperature of our lives. We have an opportunity right now to go to the one who spoke your life into existence by the power of his words. I'm talking about going to an individual that loves you so much that he gave his one only son, special son, to die on a cross for you and for me. And he loves you so much. So what is your weight? What is your weight today? What is that thing? And are you willing to just take it off and lay it down, set it aside, and begin to run the track that God has set for you to run? When you look ahead and you see that finish line, I want you to see that finish line as your destiny. And when you think of the word destiny, or de I want you to think about destination. That finish line is your destination. And God had, has a destiny. He has a plan for your life. What is your plan? Is your plan to follow Him? Unload. Do it now. If you would, just, just be honest with me today. As you guys are looking around, I'm not even going to have you bow your heads right now in this moment. I just want you to be honest with yourself. Be honest with God. Be honest with me. How many of you guys have some weight that you need to get rid of? Would you raise your hand today? Amen. I think we all do if we're really honest, right? Amen. And my hand is raised with you. So I just want to pray. If you just hold your hand up today, and I'm just going to pray. Father, in Jesus' name, you know those weights that they pull us down. They slow us down. They trip us up. They frustrate the journey. And I pray, God, that by the power of your Holy Spirit, that you would make it so clear to us what those weights are. And I pray, God, right now, that you would receive those weights as we unload to you right now. God, we literally hand these weights over to you, Father God. Lift them off of our shoulders. We give them to you, oh God. We weren't intended to carry these things. God, give us that refreshing that overwhelming feeling of freedom to know God that we can now run the race that's been set before us we can please you with our thoughts our words and our actions we can run to that finish line where one day we will hear you say those words well done my good and faithful servant you can put your hands down and as you're now your eyes are closed and your heads are bowed. I want to speak to those of you in this room. And maybe if you're watching online, you would say to yourself, Pastor Brad, I just, I need to really experience what salvation is. Real and contagious life change with Jesus kind of salvation. And I want to tell you that if you want that, you can have it. All you have to do is you have to come to the same place that I did when I realized that I had fallen short of the glory of God. I realized that I was a sinner in need of being saved by God's grace, forgiven, never to be the same again. And when you make that decision and you believe upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to save you, you confess with your mouth that He is Lord. You dedicate that you're going to live for Him and take on a lifestyle that's pleasing to Him according to His Word. You will never be the same again. And so right now, with heads bowed, eyes closed, watching online today, I want to ask you, is that you? Do you want to be led into a real and life-changing relationship with Jesus that is contagious? If the answer is yes, I want you to raise your hand today if that's you. Is that you today? Amen. I see your hand, buddy. Anybody else? I see your hand, ma'am. Anybody else? I see your hand, ma'am. Anybody else today? You say, Pastor Brad, I, I don't have a relationship with God. I have a knowledge of God, 
I know about him, but I don't really know him intimately and personally. I want to have that relationship so I can have heaven as my home. If that's you, raise your hand one more time. Anybody else in the room today? Amen. I see your hand. Amen. Awesome, awesome decision to follow Christ. So will you pray with me? And everybody, let's just pray as a family of believers together to support those who have made this decision today. Just say, Father, I love you. I thank you for your son, Jesus. I realize, God, that there are things that I've done. I have displeased you in many ways. And I ask that you would forgive me now. Wipe my slate clean. Cleanse my heart and my mind. Make me new. I believe with all my heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. I confess him as Lord. And I dedicate my life from this moment forward that I will live for him according to his word. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Would you give a hand to those who came to Christ today? Amen. We're so thankful that you've joined us today. We hope that this message has encouraged you in a tremendous way. God's word says, give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. That's Luke 6 and 38. Did you catch that? Basically what God's word is telling us is that we can't outgive him. You can give and give and give to God and advance his kingdom, and he's just going to keep giving and giving and giving back to you. Now, there's two easy ways to give. The easiest way, in my opinion, to give is by text giving. Now, what you do is you just text in the number 918-223-8090. What this is going to do is pull up a prompt for you to follow a list of instructions. And through those instructions, you can give through texting. It's super easy, super awesome. Misty and I do it all the time. Another way to give is simply send a money order or a check in the mail to Mountain Movers Church, 24,000 South 660 Road. That's Grove, Oklahoma, 74344. Again, that's Mountain Movers Church, 24,000 660 Road. Grove, Oklahoma, 74344. Don't forget to join us next week as we bring another life-changing word.